Rachel Warren, we collided in lockdown on uh, Rise of the Foot Soldiers. Oh, you're so naughty, Rachel. I'm so you naughty. Really naughty. That's why she's on the Criminal Connection podcast, because she's very naughty. I'm so naughty. <laughs> Look at Terry in the lear time. It being a tree. That is an image I've that you cannot image. unsee. And then you, you got an audition for Rise Bad of the Foot Soldiers. <laughs> I remember Randy rang me up and he went, uh, he goes, we've got three finalists. For Tony's gal. And Andy recognised me, Andy Loveday, and I just owe him everything, really. How's your room? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's good. It was like, oh, mine's mustard. Oh, um, no, I think my room's cream. <laughs> I was panicking about, like, the boat scene, and I was like, I didn't read about a boat. Next minute, Vinnie Jones walks in. I'm in a film in the cinema that I used to go to as a kid. Like, I was so happy. What was it like kissing Terry Stone? Oh, my God. I hope you said I was a great kisser. <laughs> I mean, when I auditioned for the Rise of the Foot Soldier, they asked me to take my top off. And then they looked at me and they went, gonna need to get a muscle suit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say a big thanks to all their sponsors. We love you. And without you, we wouldn't be able to make this amazing show. Big thank you to Dr. Green NFT for being one of our sponsors of the show. So the Dr. Green NFT project is coming out of Portugal and it's going to revolutionize the way that medical is transacted and distributed throughout the world. Thank you so much to Unisystems Freight UK, this amazing freight forwarding company. If you've got anything you need sending overseas, make sure you get in touch with the Unisystems Freight boys. If you want to learn any more about any of our amazing sponsors, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Welcome back to Terry Stone's Criminal Connection podcast. Today I've got a very special guest, Rachel Warren. You will definitely know the name. You will recognise her as Juicy Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> From Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins, my girlfriend, my co-star, so put your hands together for Rachel Warren. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good, to, Good see to be you. here. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Um, so um, obviously, you know, we uh, we collided in lockdown on uh, Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins, but I've enjoyed working with you, obviously, on a, on a couple of movies. But um, what I really wanted to do was find out a little bit about you um, that people watching this podcast won't know. So I just wanted to sort of go back to when you was growing up oh. and uh, when you was a little girl and when, when did you sort of have that calling to, to be an actress? Well, it was the age of five and it was quite a prominent moment. Uh, I was watching the television and I was trying to knock into the television to get the characters. Right. And my mum was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I want to be in there. And I was like, how? And I kept on looking around the side of the TV, <laughs> trying to, I just didn't get how there were humans on the television. Right. And it fascinated me so much that the whole time. And then from there, I always had this drive to be one of the, those humans right. on the TV. So it's good at five, you know what you want to do. Yeah, I knew <laughs> at five and I'm still here now. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, so obviously you grew up... Um, uh, where, where did you go to school? So I went to Maidenhead College right. uh, to start with, and then I went to Queen Anne's in Caversham. Right. Um, and then from there, my family wanted me to go on and get an education and go to uni. Right. But I still wanted to be one of those people on the telly. So right. at that stage, they were like, education, education. I was like, I can't. I, I'd want to do this. I don't want to do that. And everybody told me not to. Right. So I decided to put a proposal together for my dad. Right. And I pretty much said, look, I can still get a degree, but it could be in acting. And I put a pitch deck kind of thing together for wow. dad Excellent. and went, here we go. This is what I can do. I just need to get to drama school. And then I could maybe get some recognition from there, then get an agent, so on and so forth. Right. So, so at school, I take it going through the ranks, you was doing drama at school, you was in school plays. Um, yeah. Did you play Mary in the Nativity Play? <laughs> no, I played the star. Oh, right. <laughs> I was just a star in the background. My daughter did that as well. Really? Yeah, oh. she, played, she played the star. Oh. But I think all girls sort of kind of want to be Mary. You know? Always. Yeah. Well, actually, in at school, I knew I wanted to do this, obviously, and I was so excited. And it was in year five. Right. I was so excited because Cinderella was on. So I was like, yes, oh, I can be Cinderella. And that was my favourite, like, Disney film growing up. I used to pretend and scrub floors and stuff and tell right. mum to boss me around so I could be Cinderella. 
So I used to do that and be like, yeah, I'm Cinders. And did the casting and looked at the name board and I got cast as the king. The king? <laughs> the king. And I was like, right, well, and obviously I was sad, right. but I thought I'm going to be the best king I can be. Right. So I stood strong and stood upright and delivered my lines and you can did, see... Did, did you put on a deep voice? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> And I tried to be the king, and then that led to. And I was come honestly, on, give us, give us one of your, give us your best king. Come on, let the. How did I say it? Oh, it's more like that. It was that. Let, it was, let. let the show commence, <laughs> Cinderella. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, so I did that. But then the following year on, I think my drama school teacher realised how right. obsessed I was, and then I ended up being Alice in Under, Alice in Wonderland oh, in amazing. year six. So amazing. made up for that. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> obviously you went to um, some nice schools. Mm. And where did you, was it Surrey you grew up? So I grew up in Berkshire. Berkshire. So it was literally next yeah. to Surrey. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so you were a Berkshire girl. And, um, you know, the, the, the sort of roles, I mean, when you sort of did your uni bit, I mean, did your dad sort of sign off on the pitch deck? Did he, did he, did he say yes? So dad read it through. Um, and in there, I said I had to go because I was still quite young. I still wasn't ready for uni because I had to do A levels. Okay. So there was still one step. So I was still kind of like fifteen when I was doing this. Right. And I uh, researched into colleges that had a great reputation to then get into drama school. Right. So I actually went to Henley College and did a BTEC National Diploma in Performing Arts. So I pitched that to Dad. Right. Now. When I was there, uh, there was a director who said, I'd really want you to be in my play at Edinburgh Festival in the summer holidays. I knew my parents weren't going to let me go because they still had that kind of right. thing of, you know, you're still really young, we're not going to let you go. So I said yes to the director and I got on a plane without my parents knowing and I started acting in a play at the Edinburgh Festival. You're so naughty, Rachel. <laughs> I'm so you naughty. Really are naughty. That's why she's on the Criminal Connection podcast, because she's very naughty. I'm so <laughs> naughty. <laughs> so, yeah, so then mum called me and was like, Rachel, where are you? Because she thought I was out on the bikes with my friends. Right. And I was like, oh, I, I'm not coming home. And she was like, what? And I said, I'm working. I've got a job for the summer. And she went, where are you? I was like, Scotland. So the next minute they're on a flight over, they suss it out and then they realise I'm in the show. It ended up winning awards. Amazing. So from there, I think they realised there's just no, just she has to do what she's got to do because yeah. she's going to do it. It's funny because I think lots of uh, parents that will be watching this podcast will, will be like, yeah, you know, acting is a silly career. It's a pipe dream. And, you know, even, you know, people that have become, you know, well-established actors, their parents have said, when are you going to get a proper job? So I don't yeah. think people think that acting is a proper job. I don't know why, but, um, <laughs> um, you know, but I think, you know, it's sort of like, you know, what do you want to be? I want to be an actor. Yeah, but what, what do you actually want to do? Do you know what I mean? Nobody, always. Yeah. It's always <laughs> that, oh, yeah, what else do you do? It's but, like... But I, I, I think um, <clears throat> whatever you do in life, you should... Um, have a go, do you know what I mean? And, and whether it works, whether it doesn't work, um, whatever happens, happens. But I think you have to have a go. And I think with kids especially mm. growing up, if they actually have a direction or a vision, you should encourage them to follow that because, you know, um, I, I'd hate to bring my kids up and say to them, do this, do that, do this, do that, and they do it. And then they go, and then they don't end up being what they want to be mm. or they don't achieve what they want to achieve. And then they blame me and say, well, you didn't let me do what I want to do. You made me do this. Yeah. So I think, you know, giving people freedom and encouragement, you know. Um, but I kind of get why your parents probably was like, uh, but then the fact that they... I was they, a live wire as well. That, so when did they sort of go over and actually sort of go, okay? They, when I was at, basically when I got to the Edinburgh Festival. Got it. And I think from there... When they saw me, Did they fly up and come and watch. Yeah, you? Like, oh, they had good. to. <laughs> they, right. Straight away, they're on the plane. So, like, where, where, where is she? And why is she now in Scotland all of the summer? She's saying she's got a job, 
And I did. And I got paid. I got my first pay and everything by doing acting at Edinburgh Festival. Right. So from there, that's when it was it was a no brainer. Right. So I was just like, right, now I need to go and apply for these drama schools. Right. Because I, I had no connections. Right. Talk about connections. Yeah. Um, I had no connections into the industry at all. So right. I had to work from the ground up to get where I am now. And when you went to um yeah, what, what, where did you end up going after you did your BTEC? I went to Arts Educational, the School right. of Acting in Chiswick. Right, how long was you there for? Three years. Wow. So what was the fun part of that, being a tree or what? I have been a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I was the best tree. I've I got to ask you, right, because yeah. I, <clears throat> I did do um, acting training and I did do um, a two-year Meisner Technic course and I've done different things because I wanted to obviously learn the acting craft, but I didn't go to hey, drama school. But, you know, what what is the... T I've, I've always wondered what being a tree is, what it does. And I'm sure everybody <laughs> watching at home is wondering what, you know, what, what being a tree does when you're an actor, how it helps. Do you know what? Your focus. If you actually have to... Do you really want me to go actory? I'm I just can. interested to know what it is. So if you're a tree, um, right. this is just an example. Too tree or not to tree, that is a question. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to tree. <laughs> Think of you anchoring on the ground. Right. So the breath work that you do to centre yourself. And then you feel your feet rooted on the floor. Right. Then feel that energy from the floor going up. I'm guessing that then becomes the tree trunk. When you, sta when you stand up. Do you, do you put your arms out like branches or do you stand stand like that? What sort of tree are you? Depends what season it's tree. in. Right. What season do you want the tree to be in? <laughs> do I spread my leaves out or are right. my leaves gone? Right. So, yeah, it just, I, I mean, we're talking about being a tree. But, yeah, so then that comes up and then you hold your own. by right. So that is like your, that's like your anchor. Right. Um, and then feel that energy from the floor. That holds yourselves and that can present yourself, I think. And then just be the tree you want to be. I'm glad that you've cleared this up because I've always wondered about being a tree. Now I know why Great. you be a tree. Are you what, able to give us a little demonstration of you being a tree? Um, I could do, but um, I'd have to stand up. And obviously oh. I'm sitting down and obviously we're having this conversation. But I will, after the podcast, I'll happily yes. be a tree over there okay. and sh show you my best tree. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> so um, so, so with, with drama school, you know, lots of people say you know, they strip it away. It's like an onion. They peel it all the layers back. Um, did you, oh. did, what was your sort of, going through the three-year, you know, journey, do you think there was, it was, all, it was all good and it was all valuable or do you think there was bits of it that were a little bit just like, you know, didn't really work? Because I know they have to just generally teach everybody and everybody has different ways of getting into things. I think genuinely, the, I was very lucky and I loved drama school. And even to this day, it's one of the happiest times of my whole entire life. Oh, really? Being there, yeah. Because wow. I got to exercise and act and be involved in it all the time. So yeah. I loved it and I love learning. So yeah. it was genuinely on the basis really good. The downfall of drama school is they do not prepare you for after. Right. So when you leave drama school, so they wrap you up in cotton wool, they do strip you down. And there was bits which I which probably wouldn't be acceptable now, where we all had to be in leotards. Like, we're training to be actors. I was on the actor course. Right. But then we're in leotards and then having to be animals on the floor and we did animal studies and I had to be a gorilla and yeah. you're sitting in a leotard. So it's those sort of things where you're like, okay, back then, and then you become body conscious. Right. And then there's a lot of things that go... Do the men wear leotards as well? Yeah. See, that, I mean, you know... I don't know. I don't You'd be in a little unitard. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I'd. I'll be able to pull that off, Rachel. <laughs> I'd love to see that God, too. Look, look, look at Terry in the leotard. It being a tree. Yeah, being a tree. <laughs> that, that, that is that is an I've image that you cannot image. unsee. <laughs> We've got to um, see this. <laughs> um, but um, when I when I entered into the acting space, uh, I actually had some good um, advice. It was. You need to have really thick skin and you need to be really resilient. Because yeah. um, people do say mean things. People do, um, you know, don't, they don't necessarily give you feedback. And uh, mm. I think, you know, uh, sometimes, I mean, it's probably changed a little bit now, but I think in the early days, 
and I'm talking 20 years ago, people would say, you know, oh, you're too fat or you're too skinny yep. or your nose is too big or... I got that. Yeah, or, um, you know, you're Had not pretty mind. enough you're, you, you're, 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 or you're ugly. I mean, people were quite brutal in what they Oh, said. they were. They, I yeah. had once, I got down to the last three for one thing for a soap on television and got down to the last three and they said I had the wrong cheekbones. Right. So I didn't get the job because of my cheekbones. Right. And I was like, what am I meant to do? Like go and get surgery and do something about my cheekbones because I really want this role. And then I got down to the last two for another soap, huge role, um, and they literally said I was too fresh looking. Right. And I was like, well, you can definitely, like... Unfresh bring, me. You can definitely <laughs> unfresh me. Have you seen me without makeup? Gosh. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it's, it's really hard. It's really, really hard, and it does take a lot of tenacity, thick skin. Uh, there are times where I think comments and feedback could hurt, but you've just got to think, don't worry about those comments and feedback because they're far few compared to the the other side of what is the industry and why are you in it? Mm. And it's like, just keep moving forward and keep yourself in the present and just ignore the negativity because yeah. you don't need that in your life. Well, I think I think the, the, the biggest problem is, like you said, you, you, you do get that sort of, you know, when you're auditioning, when you're doing different things. But then obviously when the... TV series, soap, film, whatever comes out, mm. then obviously you also care for the critics as well. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so it's, uh, it is, it, uh, you know, lots of, you know, very famous actors have always said the same thing. I don't read my reviews and no. I don't, I don't read what people say on social media because no, can't. obviously, can't. If you do, um, and you know, people do thrive on, you know, they, they go on the computer to, Upset people, mm -hmm. wind people up, and you know, uh, I can't remember who it was, but there was a, a celebrity who put on a little bit of weight because I think I think it was a lady and she had a baby, and people were just trolling her saying, "Oh, you're fat! Oh, it's awful. Stop eating the donuts!" And all of a sudden, it's like she's you know, pregnant. Why? Why would you do that to somebody online yeah. you don't even know? You know what I mean? And yeah. I think if 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 you let that affect you, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why. There's, there's such a problem with mental health. There never used to be. People would have mental health issues. They'd be depressed or, you know, they would um, be hearing voices telling them to kill people. So there's always been mental health issues. Yeah. But I, th I think now there's a lot more than, than ever and, and there's something driving this. And I think a lot of it is, I think what social media has done is given people a voice to say whatever they want about whoever they want without yes. any repercussions. But I think... You're actually finding that some of this is actually seeping through into real life, where people actually think it's okay to be brutally frank to people. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was we had uh, Emily Wyatt on the other day, mm -hmm. and when we did the last She's heist, the when we did the last heist together, she she never said to me I was pregnant, right? But she turned up on set, and I looked at her, and I was like, she looks so different. Yeah. And obviously, she's normally like a size six. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was thinking. But being the consummate professional, I never even said anything about her weight. No. But then she said to me, she said, oh, you know, <laughs> um, you know, I look, how do I look? And I was like, yeah, you look fine. And she said, well, you know, I'm six months pregnant. I was like, oh. but, but the funny thing is, she didn't tell me because she thought that I might not have then put her in a movie, but I would have put her in a movie. Yes. It wouldn't have made difference to me whether she was pregnant or not. But This is our fear. Like, this yeah. is known. And I think what is really sad, and I've been doing this as well right. is you're like oh gosh I've just got I've just got this role and I've just been casting this role I can't get pregnant now until that role Damn. is done and you you keep on pushing back when you're actually going to and it shouldn't be that way you should put your family life first and then be like right well yeah I'm pregnant what what does this role need and this is this is the question now and I'm really really passionate about this is if a role is specifically for uh, someone that isn't pregnant. So you right. could still, as a doctor, you could still be pregnant. As a therapist, you could be pregnant. As a mother, you, there's so many roles. As a bar girl for Emily in right. Last High, she can be pregnant. She can be a right. pregnant bar girl. There's no reason for women not to be pregnant, but it's just, it's just what the industry make us feel like. Yeah. And 
a lot of acting roles, you could still be pregnant and you could actually work with the bump. Right. Like I, uh, on Money Heist, the TV show, the actress in there, she, she was pregnant and right. she was like a lady boss and she was real badass. And it was cooler because she was so cutthroat right. and she was called in the shots and she was really tough. But then she's got a big bump and she's walking around pregnant with this bump. It just looked really cool. Yeah. And I was like, that is what I want to do that. I want to show that you can act and work and have a baby bump, but work it into your character right. and make it part of it, which I think women should be able to do more Absolutely. and not have and not have this thing of, oh, gosh, she's pregnant. You can't use her. Now you have to use her. But I would have used her anyway. But, I know you, you know, would have. But, but, and then she was like, oh, we should have told you. I said, yeah, I'm, you know. Um, you. Um, but um, <laughs> but but that was funny. But um, um, so so going back to, you know, you've come out of drama school, <clears throat> and you've obviously done your first paid job, you know, in, in the Edinburgh uh, Festival. Mm -hmm. And then when did you did you have an agent then, or did you get an agent after that? So I got signed up. I was very fortunate. I actually got the lead role in the third year show at Artsed. Right. Okay. So uh, very very grateful. I did work very hard. Um, I don't mind saying I had, in my first year of art said I had a breakdown. Right. And I was hospitalised, so I had to retake the year and start right. over. What um, caused that? Was it Was it just... Uh... That's me. It was putting so much pressure on myself right. to be the best I could, because it's been a dream since I was five, still right. wanting to be those people on the team, those humans. Right. So I would be early... Early, like 10, 15 minutes early for school every single day. Right. I'd be listening. I'd overwork in the night of right. all my notes. I was. I drove myself because I wanted to succeed because I was right. so happy to be there. Right. Idiot. But I was so happy to finally be at drama school right. that I wanted to be the best version of myself I could be. And then that led to overworking, not sleeping properly, over-exercising, probably right. under eating right. to be this actress. And that is not the way to do it. Like be yourself. So, so, as so much as did you, you know you was having a breakdown then? Or, or? No, um, I didn't. My energy was like, I was only 18. Right. I had a lot of other stuff going on as right. well um, that I was dealing with privately. Uh, with family and all sorts of other stuff. And so I had all that going right. on at the same time. And then I was overworking there and probably throwing myself even more into work to counterbalance it. And then, yeah, I ended up just one day just blacking out. Wow. And then, yeah, the, the nurses said, there's a scale of ambition from here to here. I just rem All I can remember is this. Scale of ambition. This is no ambition and this is too much ambition. You need to be here. Right. And it's like a scale. And she said, you were over over the ambition side. Right. So I was like this. So now I am always have this like little line where right. I'm just like, oh, I'm going too much. Pull myself back. Did, did, so, I mean, so there was something good that come out of that because then it, you identified it. And when you had the breakdown, what, what actually happened? Did you, was you, did you sort of, did you actually like collapse or was you crying or was you just... Thought... Completely crying. Um, the crying came after. So I just couldn't breathe. Right. And then pass out like panic attack style. Right. But even not very dramatic, it was like a, and then just gone. And right. then I was just weak, like really skinny, really weak, really ill, right. just ill. And I was trying to say I wasn't. Right. Because I'm that sort of person that and would then, and then, that. And then what, what was you, did you sort of go to a doctor or? or? Yes, yeah, so I was in hospital. And that's when they were teaching me the scale of right. ambition and no ambition right. and how to balance it out. And I, always tell people now right. like i feed that onto people because it's like life balance isn't it work right. life health fitness that get it all right and then you're in your happy place right so yeah so i had to learn i i yeah i didn't i was in bed for about three months right. after at home built myself back up again and then the drama school art said said it was Jane Harrison said we would love her back if she wanted to come back because she's got she's got the talent and she's got right. everything to be here so yeah. and they didn't they didn't take payment or anything they that, would just like was, come back that was nice for them to do that and when so, then when yeah. you went when you went back 
was it? Did you sort of go back with a, with a new sort of lease of life because you sort of thought, right? I now know what I mustn't do. Yes. Which then overwork. Yeah. It's been my all my life. I've been too much of an overworker. Um, yeah, I went back, but it was quite. It was hard because the year above were my year. Right. And then suddenly I'm in a new year. Right. But I'm blessed now because I still have friends from that year. I just had a housewarming last weekend with them. Right. Like there's there's seven of of girls that are like best friends. So I in the end went into the. Did year you have I a group? Did in. you have a name for your group? Were you like the Spice Girls or what were you called? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more like the witches. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we are we're tight. And right, we're amazing. like sisters now because we've been through so much together. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm blessed to have taken the year again because I've got I've got these girls for life. Right. And some of the guys too. Yeah, and and then <clears throat> obviously you left. Uh, you played the the lead in this sort of end of term play. Yeah. And then you, Nana. Uh, and then uh, which was it? It was called Nana, and I was Nana. Oh right. And yeah. and then, and then you got an agent. Mm -hmm. Um. And then what would you say? Was your first, I hate to use the word big break, right? Because playing the lead in your school play was a big break. Yeah. Um, being in Edinburgh, getting paid for it's a big break. But <laughs> when, when when you actually thought, wow, I've actually got a, a job on TV or a job in a film. When, when was that? Uh, in the second year out of drama school, I got a role uh, in ITV The Royal. Right. Which is a spin-off of Heartbeat. Right. <laughs> um. And that was exciting because that was the first time I'm ever... Now, I felt like it was my big break at the time. It was right. only two episodes of a TV show. Yeah. But I felt like I did because finally I was the person in the box. Right. So for me, that was, like, amazing. But I got it because I can horse ride properly. Right, wow. So, and then when I went onto the set as well, uh, the stuntman, Clive Curtis, amazing guy, um, saw me ride and he right. was like... Okay, he says, you, you can actually ride. And I was like, well, yeah, I said I can. And he went, no, no, loads of actors say they can ride and they can't even trot. Right, and there right. I am cantering the horse round. And right. I was like, do you want me to pop it over the jump? And they're like, right. yes. And so I just, so I ended up doing most of my own stunts that I was allowed to do right. because my character basically has to jump and then fall off a horse and dislocate a shoulder. Right. So I did all the jumping over the three jumps and then the stunt girl got on to do the fall. But right. yeah, so it was amazing. <laughs> wow! And then and then uh, and then what happened? Uh, I mean, because when you get a, a a job, and 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 you and you felt wow, it's for the TV, you know, it's a film. You you think wow, you know, I wonder where it's going to lead. And and oh. the weird thing for a lot of actors, sometimes, you know, you can just be lucky and get a role, and then that catapults you. But then lots of other people get roles. And they, it goes out and then nothing happens. And then they're like, oh, you know, yep. and then they keep going back again. And, uh, you know, I think I think the most frustrating thing, well, there's two actually of being an actor. One is when you get a job and then it comes out and then nothing happens. Yes. Um, or when you audition and you get through to the final oh, two or three. Yeah. And then you don't Too many get, times. And it is annoying. It is annoying. Vikings. I got down to the last three. Right. To be in Vikings, that would have changed my life. Right. And again, it's and you put so much work into it. And the auditions, when you get the sides through, and then suddenly you're having to do an accent, and then you're having to do a character and change your body language and everything just to fit that role. Yeah. And then you get a recall, and then you get another recall, and you're like, huh. Oh, it's so close, it's so there. And then they're like, oh, yeah, they went, they love you so much, but they're gone with someone else. <laughs> and you're like, thanks. <laughs> Just taking over my life for the last month, thinking and doing work for it, but it's all right. Um, and, and obviously your career and the character you've played have, all, have, have always been, uh, you know, would you say well-to-do characters? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then obviously, um, you know, lockdown happens. <laughs> and then and then you, you got an audition for Rise That's of the Foot Soldier. <laughs> and I did. And and I, I'm obviously I, 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 I probably didn't actually get to meet you properly, but um I know you was you come to a few of the premieres and um obviously knew you was around as an actress, um, but never really sort of uh 
at, at a at a at a proper chat shoot. And then I remember um, uh, I get this like weird phone call saying, you know, I'm thinking of doing this hand tuck story. Um, and I was like, okay, well, that sounds all right. You know, do, do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and then, sort of didn't think anything of it. And then, oh, here's a script. And I was like, wow, we've got a script. <laughs> and and Nick, Nick's going to direct it. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then, obviously, you know, we started to get people like Keith Allen and Vinnie Jones. And, uh, yeah, it then starts becoming super real, super exciting. And, uh, and, then, and then I remember Andy rang me up and he went, uh, he went, oh, he goes, we've got three, three finalists for Tony's gal, <laughs> Juicy Lucy. And Juicy I was like, oh, who, who, who is it? You know, and like this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, right, well, okay. And I don't know if you know, but Kirsty, yeah. um, who played the... Um, DCI. The DCI, the police. Jones. Oh, DCI Jones, who, who arrested me in the movie. She was going to play Lucy as well. So it was quite funny. And I've known Kirsty for years. So I was like, well, look, whoever ends up playing Lucy, it'd be great, you know. And then it was like, look, Nick loves Rachel. Rachel's done the best job in our, in our view. Um, and we think Kirsty done a great job, but we like her as, you know, and this always happens, you know, yeah. the roles you get for this just because example. you don't get them doesn't mean that if they like you enough, yeah. they're going to put you in something else. So, Well, this is a great example as well to show that, you know, I got cast as a lead in it and it, it's been... To be honest, that was the best news I could have had. And we locked down as well. It was satisfaction <laughs> after everything I've been through to get recognised and Andy recognised me, Andy Loveday, and I just I just owe him everything really right. for it because he put my name on the map. And but it shows that with Kirsty, she auditioned for that and she is a phenomenal actress. Very good. Really good. And but then Vengeance is coming out. And she's in that one. Yeah. So it shows, this is for actors to know that if you don't get cast as a lead in one thing, but they give you a, another role that's a little bit smaller in that same film, that's amazing because now Kirsty did that and she nailed it. And yep. then she got this role in Vengeance on top of it. So she's in two of the foot soldiers now. So it does, it does show. So the question I've got for you, right, is... You've played these well-to-do characters. You've obviously done Shakespeare. You've done all these, like, roles which are, you know, what, what I'd maybe call quaint, right? <laughs> and then you basically it's become... It's darling. Become, <laughs> it's darling. Oh, oh darling. darling. Oh, darling. Um, Sweet but then you become, you become this sort of, uh, you know, gangster's mole, gangster bitch, hard-nosed Essex bird, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and oh, cool. and, and when, when, you, when you sort of read the script and you was getting into the character. Obviously, it's completely different to what you are as a person, and obviously roles you've done previously. So did you sort of study any any films where there's been actor, actresses playing these types of roles and then think, actually, I want to do something like what she did? Or are there, are there any actresses in, in these films that you've always looked up to and gone, wow, you know, I'd love to be like Amanda Redman or I'd love to be... Like That's Michelle Fire for his girl face, you know what I mean? So it was Amanda Redman in Sexy Beast. Right. Back in the day that I looked at this is before I got cast in foot. This was years ago. Right. And I watched her in Sexy Beast. And Sexy Beast in itself to me was like, oh my God, these guys. And it was a bit I was quite infatuated. Do you know my favourite bit of that? By film was? the criminal and the gangster world. I was like Oh, wow. Because it's so different from me. Right. So I was actually quite infatuated. Was that with... your first gangster film you saw? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did that then lead you into watching other gangster films or not? Not really. Right. Not but you really. just like, watched that, that and I was like, I want to be her in something like this. My favourite part of Sexy Beast was, was when Sir ben, ben Kingsley says, Come. That yes, is that's so the best. Good. The best. It's and so I, good. And, and I remember just laughing and people going like, What's funny about that? And I said, it, Sir Ben Kingsley yeah. saying the word it's yeah. the funniest film I've ever seen in my life. Yes. And I don't know how Ray Winston kept a straight face. Because every time I bet he didn't. I <laughs> bet he didn't. Like, Sir, Sir Ben, because he likes to be called Sir Ben. Sir Ben, you know, um if I laugh, it's not because I don't believe you, but I'm I'm just I think it's funny when you say that word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how could you not? It's like, 
Wow. Yeah. And if you haven't seen Sexy Beast, you've got to watch it. Yeah. Just so that you can hear the Ben Kingsley saying the word cunt. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, it is. It is. But um, um, so so Amanda Redman was was someone that you looked up to as an actress. What other actresses did you sort of admire? You know, being an actress yourself and looking up and saying, I wouldn't mind having her career or I wouldn't mind, you know, performing like that in something. So, Kate Blanchett yeah. is the one. Right. I was fortunate enough when I was younger. There we go. I'm going to be naughty again here. Um, sorry, Art said you're going to hear the truth. <laughs> put, your, put your hand out. Yeah. Very I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, when I was at drama school, right. uh, I was working I, I was my friend's uncle um was a special effects makeup artist right. and he was working with brad pritt and kate blanchett on babel right so he said to me do you want to come and work and be like the one i work on the shoulder with because kate blanchett gets shot right. on on a bus so i said obviously i was like yeah so at the weekend or something i ended up going to kate blanchett's house Right. And sitting with her and she served me tea and it was just, she was so inclusive and so kind, but so normal. Right. So she she's definitely not out for the press and this and the fame right. and chasing all that actress. stuff. Amazing. And she is phenomenal. So I went there and then she actually invited me to go to Morocco. Right. To be in her trailer and to be her body double stunt of the shoulder. Right. So the shoulder where she gets shot is actually me falling. Do, I didn't in, know you did shoulder acting as well, uh, right? I'm, I'm, you know, a woman of many my, talents. <laughs> I'm a shoulder actor, darling. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I did that. So I got to work with Brad and Kate on there. And she, the way she was on set inspired me. I was like 19. Right. So I was so inspired, but I was really shy right. at the same time. And I knew where my place was. And I was very quiet, actually. Um, but the thing that got me was when she went onto set, like she was half dying and then Brad was carrying her and she was crying, but she'd play with her kids at the side, like mummy. Right. And then suddenly they're like, okay, right, Kate, we need you on set. And she'd literally go, okay, put the kids down, get into character like this, and then just perform this most beautiful, underacted, gorgeous scene right, right in front of my eyes. And I was like, I was like, that is what I want to be like. Right. Just understated, kind, humble, and but giving those performances that actually make so much of a difference yeah. and so powerful. Um, but the, the thing about that as well was this is a shout out to Brad Pitt, actually. Right. <laughs> because Bradders. <when> Bradders, <laughs> my mate Brad, we both were scared of um, wasps right. because he had blood all over him. And I was standing there and I had a pot of blood and these wasps were coming. So we ended up running away from wasps right. in this desert in the middle right. of nowhere, scared. And we were both like, ah. Um, but it was actually Kate's birthday on one of the days. Right. And I was sitting in her trailer and then they called her and they're like, Kate, Kate. So she was standing in the doorway looking out of her trailer with people and they started singing happy birthday. And I know my place. So I, I just hid. I hid at the side of the trailer because I didn't want to get in the photos or right. anything because that's her moment. So I'd I just, be in the back like water bombing. <laughs> Terry would be like, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm here. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I kind of hid. And right. then she went down and they all said, thank you. And then there was a knock at the trailer door. So I kind of opened it and then Brad was there. And he was like, what are you doing? So he was like, come on, you're involved in this too. And he handed me a piece of cake and wow. included me into the circle. So, yeah. yeah. That's well, amazing. What, good what a great story. There um, you go. Um, <laughs> so, so you're getting into this role for Lucy, going yes. back to Foot Soldier. Yes, yes. Amanda, you're channeling your inner Amanda, Amanda Redman. Yeah. Um, and wh what was it like when you was, when you was, I mean, did you sort of... Uh, I had to do a lot of research. Yeah. And where, where did you, where did you, what research did you do? Did I you... looked, I watched back to back every single foot soldier. Right. So as soon as that, before I did the audition, I watched the Marbella one. Right. And got in the swing of that. But then I did, I watched. The Marbella one's the funniest, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so really then funny. I watched, which is the one Kirsten Waring was in? The first one, the Rise first of the Foot Soldiers yeah. original. So then I watched that one. Right. Because I was like, oh, okay, that's a funny one. And I was trying to relate to an actress in there that I could relate right. and get the persona of Lucy, and that was Kirsten. Yeah. So watching her performance, I was like, okay, there's a bit more 
it's more about the eyes it's more about like body language you know mm. all of that kind of stuff so then I, I watched all of them religiously before I came on I ended mm. up talking like Lucy in the shops I was I ended up do you, do you start calling on. people treacle? All right, treacle. All right, treacle. All right, can you get treacle. one of them? Can I have that, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you want a line? <laughs> like, so, yeah, I did. I put, because I needed to be, I needed to make sure that I didn't look like a complete did nincompoop. You, did you become Lucy? So I tried to become Lucy. Um, and then Nick was great because I said to him, I was like, so I don't go Essex, Essex. Right. Should we make one of the lines to say, I grew up in Surrey and now I live in Basildon. Right. So that if there was any tweaks or anything, that it would be fine for the thing. Right. So, yeah, we slipped that in there too. Thanks, Covered Nick. your back. Thanks, Nick. Covered your back. <laughs> yeah. Just in case you slipped. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> into Berkshire. <laughs> yeah. In case I slipped into Surrey or Berkshire, darling. <laughs> um, and, and when you was on the set, I mean, obviously, um, the Rise of the Foot Soldier sets are always full of banter oh. and, and full, of, <gasps> full of laughter. I mean... When you have you got any funny stories? I just laughed the whole time. I lit. You couldn't not. Um, Did yeah. you get? How'd you get on with a with a with a, with a Cockney rhyming slang? Oh, so basically, on the rise of the foot soldier, I was coming out of my hotel room in sunny South End. In South End, and there was a group of the foot soldier lot outside, and they were like, "Rachel, Rachel, how you doing?" Like this, and I was like, "Yeah, good." And they were just like, how's your room? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's good. It was like, oh, mine's mustard. Like this. And I, I was like, oh, um, no, I think my room's cream. <laughs> and if you don't know, mustard means good. Yeah. So uh, that I ended up, they all looked at me and then obviously ripped into me for right. being very Surrey, Berkshire girl, right. which was really funny. Like I couldn't stop laughing. And then later on, I think it was another day, we were all on set. Why? <laughs> it's just embarrassing. No, but it's funny. I know. Um, so well, we think it's set. funny anyway. Yeah. I <laughs> know, uh, you lot will. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm going to get, the DMs are going to go nuts, like taking the mick out of me. And then we were on set and I think it was Andy or Nick or someone went, oh, the boat's coming. The boat, the boat's coming. Like this. So I was like. And I was looking, obviously we're south end on sea, so I was kind of looking to see where the boat was. <laughs> and I was thinking in my head, I started panicking, going, I did not read about a boat. And I was like, have I got the scene? Am I, am I, I, I don't read scene. the script. I think I was in the wrong film or I hadn't read about this boat. So I was sitting there just kind of pan. Actually, I was standing, I remember, and I was in a dressing gown and I was panicking about like the boat scene. And I was like, I didn't read about a boat. Next minute, Vinnie Jones walks in. And a boat, for those that don't know, basically means somebody who's a face. Boat race face. Um, boat race face. That's, <laughs> that's it. And there I am, stressing about a boat scene that I hadn't read. Was there any other? So basically, if you've got any Cockney rhyming slang, please send Rachel a DM on Instagram <laughs> oh, no. um, and, and ask her a question and include a Cockney rhyming slang because you could get some really funny responses. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. I didn't know what pony was for ages. That's another one. Was you looking for a horse? <laughs> I, I was looking for a horse. Um, and I was like, oh, I love ponies. Like, yeah. they're so cute. And they're and all it, looking at you like, why does she like ponies? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. again, if you don't know what a pony is, pony and trap, crap, um, you know, going for poo in the loo. You know, it's all sort of linked, it's all rhyming, you know? So, it's, yeah. yeah, apparently it's all rhyming. So I was like, where's the horses and where's the ponies? I suppose it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it, when someone says, oh, I'm just going for a pony, and you're like, what? And if you know what it is, you know. Yeah. So you're going to ride on your pony or you're, yeah. how are you having a pony? What, are yeah. you kissing the pony? And being a horse rider, right. you kind of think, where's the pony? Like, <laughs> I want to get my leg over the pony. <laughs> but that's really the wrong thing to say as well when you know what it means. <laughs> just... Um, yeah. So, 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 what was there any other Cockney rhyming slang? Uh, bottle. Faux pas. Oh, bottle as well. Bottle, which is right. farm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, which I had no idea. But about. I don't really call it bottom. They call it ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody goes. Yes. You got, you got the lovely bottom. Bottom. They might be in Berkshire, <laughs> but not in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was another one, which is right. fun. Um, because obviously the scene with Lucy, that was fun. So, so now I when you're wandering, what bottle meant. So when you're wandering about now, you're like, yeah, I'm going out the apples and pears. Oh. Do you know what? I'm just going to quickly have a pony. Yeah. And, and literally, and oh, I saw this boat the other day. So you're literally just yeah. fluent, fluent Cockney, haven't you? I am fluent. Fluent. Yeah, defo. <laughs> so proud. 
Um, <laughs> did your did your parents or any of your family <clears throat> see Foot Soldier Oranges? Of course. I know they did, but I'm just. What was so, their view on it? Was they like, right, like, you should do more oh. of this, or don't do it ever again? Oh, they're all, they're like my biggest cheerleaders now. Oh, so that's, brilliant. that's the other thing with my parents. I couldn't have better cheerleaders than my Amazing. family. So I'm very lucky now. Um, but yeah, so when the Foot Soldier came out, obviously we had it in 250 cinemas. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because the showcase near where I live was a cinema that I used to go to a lot when I was younger and wow. it was in there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, the film. that I'm in a film in the cinema that I used to go to as a kid. Like, I was so happy. Well, it's goosebumps, isn't it? <sighs> it is one of those moments. So, actually, 19 of my family members were all there. Amazing. <laughs> and including, <laughs> including my fiancé, Jed, his granddad and grandma, right. and um, my dad's partner as well, who is... Um, she, she's very kind of well-to-do. Right. So, we went in to watch the foot soldier and then when I was sitting there because you forget don't you after you've you filmed it and stuff you kind of move on and and then when you go to watch it you kind of forget the scenes that you've done when we, I know we, we had we had a slightly saucy scene together slightly um, we had a lot of saucy scenes we, did you did you when it did you sort of go like that did you, did you sort of put your hand over his eyes <laughs> <laughs> um no okay. uh so with Jed I said to him my family watch this. Um, I said to him, I said, do you want me to act out on you? Like this to him. He went, yeah, that could work. And then he went, no, 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 that's not going to work. It's not going to work. So right, right, right. so it was very funny at the time. Yeah. Um, and then, but he knows, he knows it's work. Yeah, of course. Um, but when we were at the cinema, so when the film was going on, suddenly, obviously, the Lucy things and our scenes together. Right. Uh, I suddenly just died in my chair <laughs> because I realised who was there in the audience. Right. And I was like, you know, Jed's mum, Jed's dad, J Jed's family and right. my family. And there I am with you on the thing. And I'm like, but they, you know, when you're like, oh, my God. So I died a little bit. And then I was like, oh, just it's fine. It's fine. Just just let's get over it. And obviously the language as well. Yeah. The C bombs, the F bombs. There's a lot bomb. of naughty words. A lot of naughty it's words. It's just all naughty, really, isn't yeah. it? So we have eighteen to watch it. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> do. So it's a very naughty film. And um, I came out and I said to Jed's granddad, I was like, "Oh, granddad, what did you think?" And he went, "Well, yes, um, I uh, I learned a, a few new words. That's for sure." And that's all he said. That is so funny. <laughs> I said, I said to my um. It'd Mom been even all. funny if he'd have said, he said, I actually quite prefer you as Lucy. You're quite a sort. No, I'm like, <laughs> sort. That's another word, sort. A sort is something I learned. Yeah. You're a sort. You're a sort. It's like, what's a sort mean? But, yeah. I know about liquid all sorts. <laughs> yeah, liquid all sorts. That's fine. Which flavour, darling? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then I asked my um, stepmom, right. oh, what, what did you think? And she just nodded. Right. So that's kind of afterwards the yeah. feedback, but obviously my dad was my dad loved it. Yeah, my dad was so proud, and he and my mum, and they were just like my mum still talks about it now. And I'm I like, think, I think oh. what was good about Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins, um, and I and I talked to a lot of male and female people um, about because I'm always interested in getting feedback on you know because normally you say Foot Soldiers like a lads film, right? Yeah. But what was good, I think, about Origins, it was a nice balance. Yeah. And it was probably the first foot soldier film where you brought in these stronger female characters. And, um, you know, obviously it's about the boys, but the girls were like major supporters of the boys in the film. And uh, lots of girls that I spoke to um, all said the same thing. They all said, I don't know, there's something about Origins. The foot soldier fall was funny. Like mm. it was like sort of only falls and horses yes. meet Scarface type yeah. thing. But... Origins had something about it, which, you know, Vinnie Jones, obviously, you know, coming in was cool. Having these, you know, new actresses coming in um, and having these new new strong female characters in it made it, you know, I think a lot a lot more women seemed to like the last two mm -hmm. than like the ones previously. Yeah. Um, and all the guys, obviously, you know, when they when they watch it, they all, it, it doesn't matter if you're working class, middle class or, or, or upper class. Yeah. After you watch the film, everyone starts walking out of cinema <laughs> Or, you know, it, it sort of lads, helps, lads, lads, lads. helps you release your inner lad. Oh, it um, does. And I definitely have an inner lad. 
Right. I'm like. So Lucy was really sort of like a bit of a lad. Yeah. A ladette. She was. She set would, up. She set yeah. up part of the scene on one of them, didn't she? Yeah. So. And 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 you know, doing that film and obviously when it came out, what um, you must have had some people sort of messaging you. You must have had various interviews. What 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 sort of things did people ask you about being in that film and? Were they sort of shocked that you decided to sort of pop up in one of those films doing a role that you don't normally play? Yeah, I think people were... I keep going American, sorry. I'm doing a lot of American stuff at the moment. Right. Like, oh. um, so people were saying to me that they're excited because they know I like a challenge as right. an actor. And they know that I never want to be typecast. Right. So for me, this was an opportunity to be like, to keep that going for versatile actors. Mm. Because I think even more than nowadays, if you're not from the area and you don't do the accent, they just go for an eight, the person from that area. Right. When acting back in the day, we had to learn our own accents. We had to learn our own body language. It didn't matter if you were from, I don't know, UK, right. America, whatever. We were right. able to be versatile, to be able to get a script and completely transform ourselves. Right to play that role, which I think nowadays the opportunities are becoming less and less and you have to pretty much talk like yourself, walk like yourself. And well, it's, it's the, I, this is just personal opinion, but I think what's happened in acting now is a tragedy because actors are playing themselves, you know, they're, they're, they're not allowing people to act anymore. Mm. And, um, you know, for me, that sort of strips away the reason people become actors. They, they want to play different, you know, some actors, can master any accent, you know, they can change, you know, that, that to me is acting. I mean, there's a, an amazing actress who, who everybody loves, Helen Mirren. Mm. Um, she played um, Golda Hello. Meyer in um, a friend of mine's movie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the backlash on her playing that role because she wasn't Jewish was, and it was sort of like, you know, you're not Jewish, um, how can you play a Jewish part, blah, blah. And it's sort of like when you look at the pictures of her, she looks exactly like the woman, right? And the thing is, for me, Dame Maureen Lippman come out and said, you know, this isn't right. You shouldn't be playing this. You're not Jewish. And then she come back and said, well, you've played non-Jewish parts all your life. So by that yeah. rationale, you shouldn't have played any... The things that made you famous, you shouldn't have played any of them. Yep. Um, so it is a little bit silly. And I do think at the moment... Um, you know, and also with a lot of this sort of woke stuff where people are treading on eggshells and people don't know what they can say, what they can't say, whether they're allowed to have an opinion or not. And, um, you know, it's, I, 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 don't, I, I don't, I sort of feel like it's damaging the industry. Um, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, it goes back to where it was because if you look at people like Daniel Day-Lewis playing that character in My Left Foot, I mean, that was a phenomenal performance. Mm -hmm. And he obviously won an Oscar for that. But now, if he'd have done that, they would nobody would have released that film. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's 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 a shame. But, you know, it, it, I think we are where we are and we just have to hope that at some point, you know, we're allowed to act again. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. It's like, as actors, we just want to tell stories. Yeah. And it shouldn't really matter about anything else. If you're right for the role and can make deliver a really believable believable performance for the audience to connect with right. and believe that is what i think acting is as in a nutshell yeah because if people should still just be that see, if people didn't know your work before foot soldier yeah. and they'd seen you in that film oh she's a good actress i've not seen her before right and then all of a sudden you've got people that are, that are rachel warren fans you know yeah. but they might not have been before because they've not seen your work because yeah. you've not been in one of those types of yeah. films and I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't have had that opportunity uh, in other areas because I'm now from Surrey and, you know, I haven't got the right accent or maybe the demeanour or whatever. Right. But I, Nick and Andy gave me that chance. Yeah. And I was able to then, and it's just the best. It's you're able to then explore and research and become someone different. And when you've, you're in the zone, as you know, when you're in mm. the zone playing someone totally different from yourself that's when the magic happens. Yeah. And that's when, when you're in it so much and you're actually believing in the scene and you're like after, and it's, it, I always get um, mind blanks after. Right. When I've delivered a performance and I've been so into that moment, 
when I come out of it, I can't even remember what I've done. Right. And that's when I know that it was real. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. And what was, I mean, you know, I was having this conversation with someone the other day. I think acting is uh, it's quite a spiritual process. When you actually learn your lines mm. and then you're ex- exchanging energy, really, with yeah. another person. Yeah. And then you're living in the moment, you're believable. Um, you know, it must have been hard for you to not laugh when you saw me. <laughs> In with your, that great wig. In your wig. Your I was wig. like, excellent. <laughs> a wig. Um, but I what, know. You, so what, what, oh. what sort of, did you have any funny, Yeah, you know, when people are talking to you about it, did you have any sort of questions or where people have asked you things actually about what was it like to do this or what was it like to work with Terry or what was well, yeah. it like? Be, but, be, I mean, the biggest was, question of all of it, it was, what was it like uh, kissing Terry Stone? Oh, my God. I hope you said I was a great kisser. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was all very professional yeah. and it was acting and yeah. it was Tony Tucker and Lucy. Yeah, well, that's true. And and the thing is, it's funny because I haven't had a, a massive amount of uh, of scenes where I'm either kissing somebody or I'm in a bedroom scene or whatever, whatever. But lots of people always assume, oh, you know, that must be really good. You know, you get to snog these people or you get to be in bed with these people and it's like... And I've actually it's very said, different. Well, I said to myself, yeah. there's nothing, there's there's like 30 or 40 people Look all in a room you. looking at you like that. <laughs> I there's know. lights everywhere, there's a camera there, and it's really there's a hot. microphone there. It's like, and you're sitting there, and it's it's like the last thing you think is, oh, I'm really going to enjoy this. You're you just can't. thinking, let's just fucking get it, get yeah. it done. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and for me, I, I you know, look. <clears throat> We did have this conversation, you know. I'm I'm married, and, and obviously you're you're engaged. So yeah. we have to we have to be respectful. It's got to be believable. Yes. But you know, yeah. the last thing I wanted to do was do anything inappropriate. You know, exactly. when we're doing that scene. And the thing is, yeah. it's you know, I, I don't know. It's uh, I, th- I, th- I think I think I've always looked at everything I've done, whether I'm an actor or a producer, in being professional because I think that you know, lots of girls have had this. Me Too stuff, mm, um, yeah. or they've had people being inappropriate around them. You know, I don't know if you've had anything like that in your career or whether you've been lucky in that you've sort of avoided it. Uh, I have had Me Too cases, yeah. Right. Yeah. And have you just actually, literally, because obviously for, for, for girls that are watching this and, and or, or girls that think they're going into the professional, girls that are in the profession... Um, what would your advice be to him? Uh, you know, because you obviously had a way that you dealt with it. I mean, you know, it's sort of. I would. Um, I'm quite protective over younger girls now that are going into the industry, right. um, and I'm, I'm, my door's always open as well. For I do have like a lot of DMs from aspiring actors that are younger right. actresses, um, and all I say is think about your intuition and your own gut when yeah. you're sitting in a room. And there's someone in there asking you to do something that may be uncomfortable or unsettling. Like for me, one of the times I don't mind talking, the other time I don't really want to talk about. But um, when I was younger, there was one time where I remember it was in in, embankment. So I went to embankment and then I went into this like flat. And it was for a a lead for a feature film. I was going to be the star and all of this stuff. I was in my 20s. So I went up there. And then it was just him with the camera and me. And I performed, and obviously I've come off book, I've worked hard at this audition, all of that stuff. Right. Performed my little heart out as much as I could for this part. And I thought I really nailed it, like I really enjoyed it. And he was like, you're gonna be the star. Right now, um, I have to ask you, could you please take your top off? Because I need to see what your figure looks like. And I started feeling really uncomfortable. And I was like, oh, uh, uh, so I did, and I was in my bra, and I was like, okay. Um, and there is a scene where she is in a bikini, so I right. kind of thought Went along with it, that yeah. made sense. But in my gut, I was like, I feel really uncomfortable, and there's no one else in this room now, right. and I'm taking my top off. But I was so young and naive, and I should have said no. And this is the thing. If you feel where I felt there, you don't, you don't do it. And you leave, you get right. out of there. Yeah. But I did because I was like, oh, there is a bikini scene. I better do it. So I took my top off. And the next thing he said is, great. Okay, so now um, if you just don't mind taking your bra off in there. And then I felt physically sick. Like I've never done nudity in my life and I'm never right. going to start. And it's something that I don't ever want to do. 
So at that stage, I went, oh, well, th there's no nudity in the script and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come here if there was because right. I, I don't want to do nudity. I feel very uncomfortable doing that. And he said, no, 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 you're going to be the star. I have to, this is all, you're very comfortable. It's just us in here. I just need to film it. And so he was saying all of this stuff. So at there, I just ended up saying to him, I, I've got to leave. And I was like, I've got to leave, actually. I'm feeling really, really uncomfortable. And he was trying to make me stay to the point where I ran out the door. Wow. But the moral of the story is, is for girls and guys, because guys can also get in this situation Absolutely. where, you know, it's both ways here, where if you just feel uncomfortable and someone is asking you to do something and they're pretending they're in the higher power than you, well, everybody's equal in this world. And if you feel uncomfortable, do not do it. Just, just say no and go away because it, it makes you feel quite sick. I mean, when I auditioned for the Rise of the Foot Soldier, they asked me to take my top off. And then they looked at me and they went, I think we're going to need to get a muscle suit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, fair oh, enough. Because I, like, I was a bit like, hang on a minute. I don't remember, I don't think there's any nudity in this film. And they went, no, no, we just want to see you with your top off. Well, um, but this... but some, sometimes, you know, it's, it's okay, but... I definitely think, I mean, if, 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 you know, I mean, even in Hollywood, you know, you've heard about these people with these massive producers being called up to yeah. hotel rooms and all this stuff. And uh, I genuinely think, um, and this is just my opinion, right? But I think if you're an actor or you're an actress and you find yourself in a position where you're in an environment where someone says, oh, yeah, come up to my hotel room or... Come and meet me at my house or whatever. Oh. If you if you decide to do that, um, you know you've got to go there thinking, you know this person is inviting me into a private place, mm. and it might be for a genuine like look, you know we're just going to talk and we're going to have a cup of tea and blah blah blah. I want to get to know you and be your friend, or it could be something more sinister. And I think if you do go, mm. then you are kind of putting yourself yep, in, 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 in that position. And yep. I think one of the things that um, that, that I, I didn't understand about this, that, that when all this sort of Me Too stuff and all the historic abuse has come out, yeah. um, why it's taken them so long because... I think it depends on the person because there's a lot of... Because I've, I've got friends who have been abused and had serious cases like this right. and they couldn't speak because they were so embarrassed that they even went there wow. that they can't speak and then they shut up and they get silenced right. and they can't ever say because they do it and then it's like you can't say anything about right. this if you do I'm going to blacklist you in the industry right. you'll never work again there's a lot of threats that it's go like bullying with it. isn't it really yeah so it's bullying after it and then you feel even worse and then you blank it out but you feel Terri or they feel terrible. Right. Have that been any of these people? Have they come forward or not? Or they? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Some of them That's have. Um, but it's taken five, ten years for some of them because they're so scared to be able to say it and they don't want to relive yeah. it that they they blank it out and it's like a, a you know a co coping mechanism with trauma and PTSD. Right. Is that you blank, like you forget about it and blank it, and right. I can say that I've never. Fortunately, got myself in that situation. So, right. I've you did CrossFit now. You beat I'm, up, I, <laughs> now I'm a CrossFit girl. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be making right. sure I can protect all the punters. <laughs> but it's, but it is. I mean, it is. It, do you know something? I, I, I always, I think in life, as you go through life, you always look look at it through your lens. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I always yeah. think that if something bad happened to me, I'd always be like straight away, yeah. and it, I wouldn't care about the repercussions. If someone said, "Well," I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to... That's because you're Terry Stone. No, no, but I'm, genuinely, I just <laughs> yeah. think, well, you know, look, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, but I genuinely think in life, if, you know, if, if we're working together and you use something I, I don't like, I will say to you, I don't like that, and I'd expect you to be the same because I think that honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Um, and um, so, so I think when I looked at that, I thought the girls that have come forward that have genuinely been threatened and stuff, you know, you've got to admire them for actually coming forward yeah. um, after all these years, like you said. Yeah. But, Anybody that did it on a transactional basis where they knew what they was doing and they were doing it for the job and it was an exchange. You give me that and I'll give you that. 
for them to then come out, I think that's wrong. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think um, that was one of, that seems to be the default setting, isn't it? Oh, well, it was transactional. You, they knew what they were doing, you know. Mm. But I definitely think these people um, of power it's have definitely power. Mis misabused their yeah. power. Um, yeah. and, and I just think, I don't, I don't understand that. I think, I think in life, I think people enjoy, you know, people that have got power obviously use it, but they don't abuse it. A hundred percent. You can have all the power, but why don't you do it for good? Yeah. Why don't you just, why do you have to suddenly abuse, why, why do you have to go out there and do these transactional things when you've got all of that power? Why do you need to then abuse up and coming actors and actresses to, mm. for yourself? There's yeah. just no reason to do it. I'm sure you can have anyone off the street and right. wherever you go in your clubs, right. but don't abuse people that are just trying to make a career for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So after Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins. Yes. Um, oh, I will say a big thing as well, shout out again for the crew, the Foot Soldier crew, is that when I first read Lucy, right. there was nudity. Was there? Yeah. Right. So when we're dancing, you know, when we come in and Kat and I are dancing oh, after yeah. the club, I was meant to then have no top on. Right. And my boobs out. So I literally... And you were like, I'm not again. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally, I said to Andy, I said, look, I really want to do this role, but I can't do it. Right. And he was like, why? And I was like, because I'm not, I'm not getting my boobs out. Right. I said, I'm comfortable in lingerie right. and I'll get in shape for it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'm the wrong actress. Right. And then Nick and Andy rewrote the script. I think it's good though. So that's, that's respect. Yeah. No, but time. I genuinely think that as an actor and actress, you have to have uh, boundaries and you have to yeah. say, I'm happy to do that. I'm not happy to do that, and yeah. you know, and stick stick by your guns. You know, if someone yeah. says to you, "Well, you can't have the foot the roll." Well, if you if it if it upsets you in doing it, then why would you do it? No, you know? yeah, you just say no. Yeah, um, I just didn't see the point of having my boobs out when everyone was right. sitting in their jackets, and then suddenly I'm the it's one. A bit weird, isn't it? It's just like it's not going to happen. But it, it, but it, when you actually think about it, it yeah. doesn't actually make any sense. No, Unless it's you're... not like in Titanic. You know where Kate Winslet <laughs> <laughs> in Titanic. Right. With Kate Winslet. That's what you when, thought we was recreating in South End when I was talking yeah. about boats. You thought, I don't remember but me and Tony standing on the boat like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Kate Winslet, she got right. her boobs out, but she was in an art painting with right. Leonardo DiCaprio doing an artist nude painting, and it looks stunning and yeah. artistic and beautiful. Yeah. That is a compromise, depending on the, the, the scene and what it is for. But even that, then it's got to be something that's going to catapult your career. Yeah, in, in, but then that's just my absolutely. opinion. But if you, you know, there are actresses out there that are just not body conscious at all. Mm. I love those girls. Mm. I'm in awe of them. Mm. Like, I'm like, oh my God, liberate. You're so liberating. You're empowering me because they are so free and they, they don't mind. Yeah, but genuinely, so, you know, I, I think. I'm just a bit prude, I think. I don't think you are. I think oh. if you had a. I think if you have a role which. You know, you read the script and there's a reason to be nude, right? Yeah. Then I think maybe you go, actually, there's a reason for it. But just like yes. you said, sitting in the room, just sitting there with your ass out, and oh, hello, you know, I'm Lucy and all that. It's sort of a bit like, well, everyone has got their jackets. Why would I? Yeah. So it doesn't actually make any sense. Whereas no. if everyone was sitting there with no clothes on, yeah, then maybe for a you reason. go, okay, well, if we're all sitting with no clothes on, eyes then, wide shut. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's very different. But, but after, after Foot Soldier Origins, what, um, what what happened for you after that? Did you did you get any more sort of uh, gangster roles or or you know have you have, have you just sort of yeah what what sort of happened for you as an actress after that? So Foot Soldier put me on the map, um, and then obviously with you. Is that I your did, big break? Yeah, I think <laughs> that is that's put me on the map to the next right. level, um, and the offers I've got in sit. So from Foot Soldier, the reason it's it's helped is that I'm getting straight offers for acting Brilliant. more. And obviously still, I, I mean, I did casting last week. So it's still, I'm so way near not at the stage where you just get your script given to you. I'm just like, right. do you want this role? That's the dream. Because right. um, I just really don't like castings. You can't, <laughs> I just find them really, really tedious and hard, hard work to get the role. And you do so much work towards it. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I'm really pushing for that next level now. Mm. Um, and with Foot Soldier, what it did do is get me 
recognized and get me a fan base right. of my own. Yeah. And so now I have this little support fans that just are watching everything I do. When you walk down the road, the people shout, Lucy! They have. It That's so funny. It, only a few, funny. not too much. It's but good, yeah, I've it? had let I've yeah. had Lucy. I've yeah. had Lucy quite yeah. It's uh I love it. <laughs> when when they do, it's just gives you so much love. And the then thing you is end it, up hugging them, you're like, oh thanks. But it, but I always find like, you know, whatever role you do in a film or T V series, if people recognise you for that yeah. role. Yeah. I've always said it's a positive because people for people to come up to you and actually mention Yeah. You know, I've been in the most weirdest places. And yeah. People just turn around and gone, I love that film. And you're just like, Oh, thanks. Yeah. And then in like, different countries. Yeah, just yeah. anywhere. I could be anywhere. I could be sat on a train. I could be in a club. Yeah. I could be standing in the urinal. Right. Could be anywhere. And then people just tap me on the shoulder or they look over you and go, Oh my God. And and you have a chat of them. And I always find it bizarre. I know? had the bizarrest thing ever. I was on I was actually on the phone with Experian <laughs> and I was talking to them and this guy was in South Africa on the phone. Right. And I had to say my name and my details and he went, are you out of the foot soldier? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah. He went, oh my God. I, I, I couldn't wonder the accent, but he was just like, you're out of the foot soldier. That is so good. That's so cool. Like this, right, he right. says, oh, I'm speaking. And then suddenly the whole of the call center where he was working, they're Lucy. like, Lucy, oh, hi. <laughs> oh my God. We're talking to Lucy from foot soldier like this. And I That's was so like, funny. this is the weirdest phone call ever because I'm, I'm calling Experian. <laughs> like it was just the bizarrest moment to Excellent. have that happen. Excellent. And I was like, and they, then they couldn't focus. Right. I needed something done, and I was like, "Okay, can we get back yeah. to it?" But yeah, and and, and uh, when you look at um, you know other projects that you're working on now and, and things for the future, what what does the future hold for you, Rachel? What are you uh, working on now? I know I know you're obviously looking at and you have produced movies, and um, you know you've obviously got your own production company. But let's talk about all the other things you do as well, because it's good for you know anyone watching the podcast knowing. You know, what you got coming up, what, what else you do on the side. Amazing. Um, yes, so I have a few things going. Uh, so basically, to wrap it up, in my 20s, I did loads of awful jobs around acting to support right. it. Uh, from Paper Girl, I was out 6 a.m. in the morning at Euston Station handing out papers to all that. It was just, yeah. So when I turned when I turned 30, I wanted to build my own company. So I did Pick Pie Parties, Children's Entertainment Company. Yeah. Um, and then that that went really well. I got onto Channel Five, BBC Billionaire Babies for Kids, like all of this promotion for that. Yeah. And then I decided to close that down because I wanted to be more and more in the industry. So I started my production company. And for that, I, the reason I did this is solely so that I could cast myself, not necessarily the leads, but cast myself in high quality content. Right. films, TV, whatever it is that right. I would end up producing with the company. Um, because it was, I was just so sick of, you know, getting not getting the roles that I really want to get. Right. So I'm making my own opportunities yeah. by producing, and I've got a very, very John, um, versatile slate of films. I've got a television series that's in discussions at the moment with Netflix. Yeah. Um, so that side is really good at the moment and then i also started up my own television and film poster design business right which i love and i've got the most amazing designers love you <laughs> um who who are phenomenal and right. you know now we've got to try and learn about the ai side of it so that we can keep up with everything on the mm. design front um so there I've now worked with... Um, well, the good news is you won't need designers. You can just get out of it. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> oh, I don't. <laughs> so our industry... The only good thing it. about oh. AI is you could die and then you could still be on screen for another 100 years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're getting royalties from it, I don't mind. But if you're not getting the royalties from it, then... Yeah, there's a lot, a lot going on with AI at the moment as well. But I do stand up. I stand for the Writers Guild in America. So we've we've stopped um, uh, going towards America with our scripts at the moment because we're respecting it and we're just yeah. you know. We're I mean, look, it comes to you know, lots of people uh, don't understand what the 
strikes you about with the actors and the writers. Um, but for me, it's, you know, if you're in a successful TV show or film and it goes out to hundreds of millions of people and you're not getting any residuals, mm. I can understand people being pissed off by that. I fully understand yeah, 100%. it. 100%. So, you know, I, yeah. I, and, and, you know, I think it puts the streaming platforms and the, and, and, and the studios in an awkward position because obviously their models are all based on not paying residuals. So now if they've got to then start saying, well, we've actually got to start paying people residuals or giving people so much per view or whatever, yeah. then obviously they're going to have to put their prices up. And if they put their prices up, are people going to pay 50 quid a month to subscribe to a platform? Probably not, right? Yeah. Or the ones that do will be, you know, instead of it being 230 million people, it might only be 100 million. Um, so, you know, it's... And then obviously then the residuals come down. So yeah. it is a balancing act and... Um, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't actually see how it's going to get solved. I hope it does get solved because, uh, you know, obviously know. If, if there is no content and if actors aren't allowed to promote the content because of the strike, then that means there's going to be six to nine months next year where yeah. the cinemas are going to have no content, the streaming platforms aren't going to have any content and it is going to be a bit of an odd Time. environment, you know. Right now it seems to be like, you know, everybody's uh, on strike. So whether it's you know the railway people, whether it's yeah. you know there's, there's, there's teachers, whether it's the actors, it's like everybody's on strike about something. And um, I understand people are pissed off, right? Nobody enjoys paying more for their electric, their gas, their phone bill, you know, their petrol, their food. Everyone f is pissed about that. Yeah. But but the reality is, you know, um, the government did decide, you know, to lock everybody up. And stop people going out to, to obviously stop the virus spreading. And they obviously decided to, you know, if, if, if nobody can work, if they hadn't have given people, um, bit, but, but, you know, support, then the whole country would have gone bust. Yeah. So it was like, if we do this, we've got to do that. If we don't do this, people could die. And and that's obviously what we're, where we are now is because of that. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. in hindsight, people will blame the government, but most of the governments around the world did the same thing. So... It wasn't like just the UK government, you know. Yes. It was a it was a choice that a lot of it people was. made. Yeah. And, and look, if you'd have not locked people down, and loads of people have died, yeah. then everyone would be going with well, the government's. That should you should have locked everyone down. So whatever the government had done, they would have lost. Yep. So it wasn't a win-win. So I think essentially, you know, we've probably got another year, two years, of it being, you know, what I call. Up. You know, it's yeah. like a technical term. <laughs> but, but then once that's over, then yeah. hopefully we will get back to some sort of normality and reality and we won't have anything to strike about. And the world will be a better place. Oh, we're going to be a better place and we're going to be happy <laughs> and we're going to make amazing films and everyone's going to be happy and get on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I enjoyed your performance in The Last Heist as well. Thank you. And, um, Nominated you know, at Marbella Film Absolutely. Festival Best Actress. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I definitely think there's going to be some other projects that we're going to work together on, Rachel, because I've enjoyed working with you as, yeah. as an actor and as a producer. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, thanks so much for coming on our podcast, Thank sharing you. your stories um, and, uh, you know, talking to us about Lucy. Yeah. Because... Uh, Lucy, Lucy, or... Juicy, Lucy. Juicy, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, Juicy, Juicy. But, but the Cockney Rhyme is saying stuff is, is hilarious. And I'm sure when this goes out, you're going to get inundated <laughs> with <laughs> messages with people... Bamboozling you, but you would have to go to to, to Waters, uh, Waters, Weatherspoons, I nearly said then. No, Waterstones. You've got to go at water, No, don't go at water, Weatherspoons. Go at Waterstones. Tell me to come to Weatherspoons. <laughs> Apparently you do some nice burgers here. But no, you're, you're going to go in with, uh, and, and go to Waterstones and get, get a book. Cockney Rhyming Stone. But then when people do send you a message, you can look oh, it up no. and go, yeah, you think you're clever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Done my research, back. guys. <laughs> Remember, I work hard. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the Criminal Connection podcast. Rachel Warren, a.k.a. Juicy Lucy, what a great guest. Um, thanks again, and make sure you tune in for next week because we've got somebody extra special. Bye.